Oh, sugar honey iced tea. It's the EAC show. Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Emilio A. Colon. I am Marcus Mack, and this is the EAC show coming to you live from sunny South Florida with episode 58. Joining us on episode 58, New Balance swag wearer, Rock Nation sports representative, University of Maryland, and Boston Red Sox pitcher, Mike Schwarren is joining us on episode 58. Mike, we really do appreciate you coming on to the show with Marcus Mack and myself. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on. How is everything going? Is the family okay? Everybody going, you know, doing well during this whole COVID-19 pandemic nonsense? Yeah, um, you know, I think we're all just trying to trying our best to, um, you know, socially distance and, and keep healthy during all this. Um, you know, my family up in Jersey, I know, had a little bit tougher time. They were hit a little bit harder up there. Um, but everybody's doing good. And at the end of the day, that's all you can really ask for. And, and how, how have you been holding? I know, look, it's, it's difficult yeah. adjusting to everything that's going on. People are out of their comfort zones and they're starting to do new things. I mean, I know people starting to work out. Did you get that Rocky Four mentality when you were training and trying to work out to where you had to cut logs or, you know, running run in the, the woods or something like <laughs> yeah. that just to get your workout in? Um, I don't know if I went that far, but, you know, I was inspired by them. Being grown up, you know, in, in the South Philly area or South Jersey area, um, you know, that was one of the, the movies I'd like to watch. But during all this, I mean, you have to get creative. Um, gyms aren't open. Places that you normally go to train at aren't open. So um, you got to figure out a way to get, um, you know, the job done, whether that means, you know, more push-ups or, like you said, just kind of doing some cross-country running, you know, not cross-country, but like out, you know, in, in um, places that you wouldn't normally train, you know, and uh, it's it was fun, you know, it kind of gave it a different spin, kept it a little bit loose, you know, in, in such a trying time, too, so. Yeah, I had to stay on top of your game, man, I had to stay on top yeah. of your game, that's good, and it's been maybe like about, it's been some months now, you know, with this whole quarantine and everything, like how's yeah. it been on you and your family? Has everything been good? Yeah, you know, we just kind of take it day by day. Um, I feel like that's the only way you can. Um, you can't really look ahead, can't look behind, and just kind of enjoy the day, you know, just try and make the best out of the day you possibly can. Um, you know, whether that's working out, just hanging out, you know, make, you know, trying to have some fun. You know, I've been, I've been playing some Wii golf, you know, and I've never done that before. That was pretty fun. <laughs> so I just, I'll just be honest with you real talk. I am like literally so anxious for major league baseball to start. I want to literally run on top of a hill or like the landfill that they have over here in South Florida, run to the top of it and yell like drag over, like literally, cause I'm so ready for major league baseball to start. You have no idea. No, I mean, I think we all are, um, you know, we're excited now that we have a date to report, you know, and, um, you know, for me, just working out and, and working towards this final date, you know, that now we have, um, it's a lot of excitement, you know, you, you train now, what, three months, um, and now you finally get to do it. So <laughs> it's exciting. And listen, shout out to Marcus Mack for you guys that are not watching on YouTube and only listening on the podcast. Marcus Mack is wearing the illest Nike Boston Red Sox white jersey repping for our boy Mike right now on the show. Yeah, real fresh right there, real fresh. <laughs> if anybody, if anybody knows me, they know I love jerseys, man, but I had to do it for Boston. I appreciate it. <laughs> so tell me something. Tell me something, you know, I'm going to lean more into – I want to get into the sports, but yeah. I know Emilio really – because baseball is Emilio's flex. That's it's in my blood. It's in my blood. That's talk, awesome. We can yeah. talk about anything else, and he might talk a little bit more. But when it comes to baseball, he's the man that you want to talk. <laughs> to. So you know, I know you um you signed with Rock Nation, right? Mm -hmm. Um, how how did that come about? Um, yeah. So I kind of had a good, really good relationship with uh, my agent Kyle, uh, Kyle Thousand, um, in college, and I didn't really look into getting an agent or anything until my junior year. Um, and when that came around, I started, you know, kind of listening to agents. Um, and I, I just kind of grew fond of Kyle. I mean, he's a great guy. Um, you know, to me, he's one of the best in the business. And, um, you know, we got close. And then he actually moved to Rock Nation. Um, he came from a different agency. And then with that, you know, I had 
at that time, I had um, I said, you know, I'd love to be represented by you guys um, and what you have to bring to the table. And, um, you know, I guess the rest is history, you know, but um, it's great. I mean, I can't, I can't thank them enough for what they've done. And, you know, it's been a, it's been a fun time. How, how, long, how long have you been with Rock Sports? Um, I've been there since my junior year in uh, college, which would have been 2016. Um, okay. I, I think maybe technically the winter of 2015, but um, yeah, they've been, they've been, um, they've been really great. Now, I, uh, not for nothing, Mike, real quick. I'm sorry, Marcus, not for nothing. I've heard your story. I didn't express it to Marcus. Can you explain your story of your shock and awe moment when you actually got a chance to meet Mr. Carter? Yeah, I mean, that was, that's one of the coolest moments, you know. Um, so we went, we went out to dinner. We were um, going to a, a concert at the 444 tour. And um, we went out to dinner, kind of hanging um, in like a, in the VIP club area. Um, and a guy walks up and uh, he was like, hey, come with us. And I kind of was like, and my agent was like, no, no, go ahead. It's all good. So we walked with him and um, we followed him to this room and he asked us to wait out and then he comes out and then we walk in and it was like the most surreal moment ever. Um, you know, it was all gray and you know, you're, you, you meet Jay, you know, like it's, it's incredible. <laughs> you know, you're, Like you're face to face with Jay Z, you know, like my freshman year, I came out to one of his songs in, in college. So um, you know, to kind of come full circle like that was, it was pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, you know, I represent, I represent Brooklyn to the fullest, man. So, you know, to hear that we got a, a rock nation, just for the record, when you think rock nation, rock sports, it's synonymous with Brooklyn, you know? So it's yeah. like, oh, a rock nation representer, I would love to know like how he got involved there. So did, um, did rock nation and, and your agent, is that who facilitated in the deal with, uh, with New Balance? Um, yeah, I mean, Kyle does a great job facilitating that type of stuff um, and bringing up opportunities for me. Um, so yeah, he, I mean, he, Kyle was a big part of, or played a big part in, in, in getting that done and, and helping me out with that. So, you know, all the credit goes to him. So, <laughs> so you, you, get, you get a chance to get all of that Kawhi Leonard, boring man type of uh, gear and stuff like that, that type of swag? Yeah, my favorite shirt is just a simple New Balance shirt. It just says gray shirt. You know, like, <laughs> perfect and simple. <laughs> Yo, listen, I'm not for nothing. They are winning when it comes to that really, really just, like, dull marketing scheme. They're, they're, they're bored, man, and you got the yeah. Coco Golf situation. And they, like, they're, they're winning when it comes to that. So shout out to the people at New Balance. Way to plug them into the, to the show for sure, for sure, Marcus Mack. Great question. <laughs> Now, also, Mike, just just letting us know a little bit about, you know, what was it like when you actually ended up getting called up to the major leagues? That surreal moment you waited your whole life for. Every yeah. kid dreams of that. You share with your family members the sacrifices that are made by them to take you to practices and games and yeah. so forth and so on. Just just give us a little bit of, you know, a little bit of feedback on how it felt to be called up and, you know, a little bit about that story. Yeah, I mean um... – it just, it was surreal. I, I, I think that's the best word to really describe it. Um, Cause honestly, there's no words that describe it, <laughs> you know, like it, it's such an unbelievable moment. You work your whole life for um, it's as a dream, as a kid, you know, and, and you're finally there. Um, I remember I was, um, I was hanging with my buddy and I got a call from a Boston number and I was like, Oh, you know, this was after a game. So I was like, oh, you know, maybe somebody needed to talk to me or whatever. And I get, I get on the phone and they're like, hey, uh, you're getting called up. And I was like, I don't, I don't even think, I don't even remember what I was thinking. It was just kind of like <laughs> blank, you know, like I don't even know, if for, you know, words formed in my mouth to respond after that. But I, I just remember just being like, oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> you know. Um, you, had a, so, you had a brain like, fart. You had a brain fart. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it was an incredible moment. Um, you know, I, I FaceTime. Um, my fiance, uh, and she was like dead asleep. Cause I mean, it was midnight. So she was like, what? what? <laughs> you know? Um, and then she, you know, she was trying to figure out flights and everything to get up there. Um, you know, and then I called my family, um, you know, and it was great, you know, and then on top of all of it, it's in Yankee stadium. Um, and being that I grew up in Jersey, you know, all my friends and family, you know, who couldn't make it, made it, um, you know, I, and I can't thank them enough because as much as, 
I was there, you know, all, they all played a part in getting me there. So um, to share that moment with everybody, it was, like I said, there's no words that I'll ever describe it. So, yes. so let me ask you a question, right? I know you was a, a fifth round draft pick, mm -hmm. right? How do you feel about this year now? There's only been five, five, uh, five rounds, right? Which yeah. now is way more. How do you feel about like how how do you feel like uh you know with you being a fifth round draft pick and only being five rounds this year? How do you yeah. feel about that? Because I know I know the fifth round draft picks they get a lot they're getting a lot less than yeah you know when it's way more when it's way more rounds. Yeah, I mean, if anything, I'm just thankful that I was drafted at the time that I was. <laughs> um, you know, I I, I would have been a lot more nervous, you know, but um yeah, I mean. You find there's guy, you know, there's gems in the draft class, you know, in in, in any round really. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I would have been a lot a lot more nervous this year, you know, being that I was a fifth rounder, um, you know. So, can you give us your opinion? Do you think it stays that way, or do you think they literally sit there and they dial it back, maybe to like twenty rounds or whatever? I mean, what is your opinion on that? Honestly, I don't know. Um, you know, I can see them doing that, opening it up at 20 rounds or 30 rounds, you know, shortening it, but still keeping it a good amount. Um, I just think with the pandemic, it, it yeah, kind of just throws a loop in at everything, you know, and um, I, don't, I don't see it staying at five, but I don't, I can't really sp speak enough on that. Um, yeah, but I just, I just think with the pandemic, it kind of threw everything for a loop right there. Um, you know, and, and I would personally, I would think maybe closer to that 20 or 30, you know, or 40 back to. Yeah, the agreed. Now, without question. I agree totally without question. So you end up getting called up. You got your moment in Yankee Stadium. Obviously, we know you didn't end up pitching in that series. Yo, mm -hmm. how many tickets did you have to buy? Like, real talk. <laughs> Well, you know what? I, this is a sh huge shout out to the Red Sox. They they're incredible when it comes to this stuff. Um, you know, they they make sure it's taken care of. You know, your family's taken care of. Um, you know, once you get caught up there, um, so they did an incredible job facilitating that type of stuff. Um, but I know at some point there was a limit, but they kind of let it known that like you know I didn't have to really deal with that stuff. Like just let me focus on the baseball side of things. So they reached out to my family and and had that dialogue with them. But um, just the fact that they did that, I mean, it speaks volumes of, of you know, them, so. To j just, Marcus, just to let you know, when a baseball player ends up getting friends and family tickets, they still gotta pay for those extra tickets. That's not their mom, yeah. their dad, their fiance, sister, or something like that. So yep. anybody yep. else that comes to the game, they gotta come out of pocket themselves, usually, and pay for the rest. Or they got to bum it from other guys that don't have people coming to games or whatever it may be. We've definitely established that um, that the, the MLB is not playing about their money. We nah, don't. they don't play with their money. No, <laughs> they, they don't play. They don't play when it comes to bread. Yeah, when so, all the extra people, they're gonna have to pay. <laughs> so next series, obviously, you end up playing in Boston, correct? Uh, yeah, well, there was actually a small series out in Kansas City, and then we came back to Boston. But yeah. So, so on the home on the home stretch, you ended up actually getting into the game. You actually ended up playing. Yeah. How did that feel being on the mound for the first time in front of everybody in Fenway? Um, I remember my first warm up pitch in the bullpen was like spiked in like fifteen feet to the left. <laughs> and I was just like, "Well, here we go." You know that you know in the bullpen, and then uh, getting finally out there, it was um, it was surreal. You know, I took I think I took I remember taking like a, a second to just kind of soak it all in. Um, you know, but I just only allowed it to be a real quick kind of second to soak it in. And then it was just back to business, you know, cause at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's what you've done for your whole life. So does Marcus look like one of the, the, the bleacher guys in the, like in the bullpen? He literally looks like he has his Jersey on. He looks like he, he could be one sign. of those guys, right? <laughs> yeah. Like a sign. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm more of a, a boxing guy when I, uh, when I got invited, by Emilio to come and do the show. I told him, bro, I said, you know, I'm not really a big sports guy. He said, man, yeah. they're going to love you. I'm telling you. So <laughs> my angle has always been, you know, my personality, unless we talking about Iron Mike. Or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, but it was, it's definitely a blessing to, uh, to be able to talk to you guys, especially I've been learning so much about the sport. And, yeah, of course. Uh, and seeing the treacherous business and negotiation tactics. That, oh, he uh, loves 
that the players he loves the business side of it. Yeah, the players association. <laughs> it's interesting for sure. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting thing, man. Um, you know, like how how do you feel? Do you feel like the players association did everything that they can for you guys in regards to like this whole negotiation process? Yeah, I mean, um, my trust is fully in them, you know, that they're doing everything they can, um, you know, and are willing everything they can to will um, to get, you know, well, now that we have a report date, but, um, you know, I, I had faith in them that they, they, they were doing everything they could, you know, and, and um, you know, we finally got a date and, you know, we're all looking forward to finally getting back at it, you know. Honestly. <laughs> and for you guys that are listening or watching on YouTube, we are being joined by Boston Red Sox picture Mike Schwarren. He's joining us via Zoom. Marcus Mack, not for nothing. Mike doesn't get it, but we explained it to Sean. We do love, really love, sincerely love Commissioner Manfred. Yeah, yeah, we're like, definitely big fans of him. This is just myself and Marcus Mack's opinions has nothing to do with Mike. We love him so much that he literally took three months to drag his feet to get this season started. I'm glad that the season's going to start. But you could have agreed to this three months ago, fam. Listen, man. Listen, that was definitely the most sarcastic line that we have, <laughs> we'll ever have on the EAC show. We're definitely pro player. Like I say all the time, I respect the business acumen of the owners and the people who's, you know, representing MLB, but we're definitely pro player. We want these people back out on the field because they want to play and the fans want their baseball. You understand what I'm saying? But he definitely flexed his muscles. You know what I mean? He flexed his muscles, you know, but I think, I think, I think 60 games is not bad though. Yeah. 60 ah, games whatever. Bad. Listen, so real quick, just to, just to get off of <laughs> Commissioner Manfred, just to get off Commissioner Manfred real quick. Tell us about how are you feeling going into spring training, getting with the guys, the chances of the Boston Red Sox. They always compete in the American League East, yeah. either them or the Yankees usually. But how did you feel going into the season, and how do you feel going into spring training 2.0? Yeah, I mean, I was pretty um, – I felt good coming into the season. You know, you look up and down on, on our roster, we have a lot of talent. You know, we, you know I know we had some key – you know, with DP and, and, and Mookie, but I mean, we still have JD, you know, we still have Mitch Moreland. We still have um, a host of guys that are just really good. And then from the pitching side of it, you know, same thing. So um, I, I line us up with anybody, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in that aspect. And then coming into spring training 2.0, you know, you don't have, you know, every day where you get two spring trainings in one year. So you got to make this one count, um, you know, Fortunate, the first spring training kind of <clears throat> was a little bit longer to the point where we were getting ready for the season to start. Um, so you could make those adjustments. You you kind of saw some things that you needed to tweak and whatnot, um, you know. And now, you know, having that three-month span, you, you could work on those things. So, um, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm in a better spot. You know, I feel better, um, you know. And, and I've, I've worked hard these last three months to keep – keep in shape, um, you know, training wise and everything. You never really know until you play a game. Um, you know, there's game shape and then there's being in shape. Um, oh, of you know, course. So you never know, but you know, I did everything I possibly could to kind of stay ready, stay, you know, in the best shape that I could with everything going on. So. Yeah, absolutely. Without question. So also just a little bit to, 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 to let the Red Sox nation and everybody else that's listening in, do you feel like you're being utilized properly? Do you want to be a starter? UK doing the reliever? Or are you just like, yo, I'm a team guy, let's just rock. Whatever was needed, I'm down. I mean, whatever whatever helps bring another World Series title back to Boston is what I'm ready to do. Um, you That's know, the answer they want to hear. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, honestly, there's – Winning in Boston is incredible, you know, and, and um, anything that I can do to bring that feel back, you know, I, I'm, I want to do, you know, so – yeah. That's great. That, it's that's funny. Really, it's that's... funny because I, I wanted to ask him about that too. I'm like, you know, do you feel like? Do you feel? For one, I definitely want to ask you what's your favorite pitch. We're definitely we're gonna go with that one, right? But I wanted to know. Did, did I want to know the same thing? Did you feel like that you would be able to take them to another another championship? You know, I, I hope so. Um, 
every time I go out there, I'm trying to, I'm trying to compete. I'm trying to get out, um, you know, and, and get us back into the dugout. So our, you know, our hitters can and do some damage. So, um, you know, for me, I, every time I go out there, I'm, I'm trying to win. I'm, I'm trying to put us in a position to win. Um, you know, whether that means, you know, eliminate or, or suppressing some of the damage done or, or being the, the, um, fire extinguisher, whatever it is, like anytime I go out there, you know, there's only one goal. And I think that that really resonates with anybody, you know, not just with the Red Sox, but any competitor as an athlete, you just, when you're out there, there's nothing else but winning <laughs> really when it comes down to it. So, so, so here's what I'm going to ask, right? Here's what I'm going to ask. I'm not going to ask what's your favorite pitch. I'm going to ask which one of your pitches do you think has given people the most problems? Great question. Um, probably my sliders. Uh, I have two different ones. So, you know, don't, don't, be too much. don't tell them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. <laughs> I actually have 15, you know. <laughs> they all look do, different. I mean, do, do you do a Rick Vaughn from uh, from uh, Major League does? Do you name your pitches? You got names no, on? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, um, not for nothing, you know, that's, that's great to know that you literally, you want to get people out, strike them out or whatever it may be. But what I really am interested in knowing is – what is it going to take to dethrone the Yankees? Um, I mean, they have – it's a great team. You know, there's a lot of respect there. But um, it'll Come take – Come on! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, He's going to take an 2 fastball real quick right down the middle. <laughs> no, I mean, they're, they're an incredibly talented team. Um, you know, and honestly, when you look at the AL East, there's a lot of talent there, um, not just with the Red Sox and the Yankees, but, you know, kind of everywhere, um, you know. So one thing that's playing in the AL East is just every time that there is a series, like it's a series, you know, like there's no days off, which honestly there's no days off anyways in the MLB. You know, you're always constantly trying to get better, um, you're working hard. Um, you're trying to get that, you know, edge um, and – in the AL East, it's tough because you have just four really good teams, you know, like it, there are or five really good teams, you know, and, and it's like I said, each each series is a series. You know, there's a lot of mental preparation, physical preparation that goes into it, um, you know, and, and each series kind of is different in its own, you know. So, like, what one thing could beat them, I don't know, because – when they come into the series, there's a lot of different things happening, a lot of things different going on. So with this shortened season now, every game is going to feel like that playoff atmosphere. And I like to use the word that Marcus Smack likes to use. Every mm -hmm. game is going to feel spicy. <laughs> yeah, it is. And that's what you live for, you know. Like you, you grew up in your backyard throwing three, two, whatever's with bases loaded in the bottom of the, you know, at least ninth inning in the World Series. Yeah. Um, you know, as a, as a competitor, as a baseball player, that's kind of what you lived for your whole life. Um, you know, so it'll be an exciting season. Absolutely, hey, without question. question. Let me ask you a question, right? I, I know you're a Jersey boy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, being in Boston, you've been in Boston pretty much, you know, mm -hmm. your, whole, your whole career thus far. Um, yeah. You feel like you can retire. I know you're still young. But do you feel like you retire in Boston? Is like the Boston the place for you? You want to stay there? I've loved every second playing in Boston. Um, you know, it's an incredible city, incredible town, incredible area. Um, and being from, you know, the Northeast, it's nice to play up there. Um, but obviously I'm, <laughs> I'm young in my career, you know, hopefully. So I don't know. But all I can say is, you know, thank you to the fans. Thank you to the city because they've been nothing but incredible. So. Absolutely. And once again, we're being joined by Boston Red Sox pitcher Mike Schwarren. Mike, we really do appreciate you being on the show with us and taking the time. I hope everybody in your family is staying safe during this whole coronavirus pandemic nonsense. We're glad that Major League Baseball is going to get back. We're glad you're going to be able to go over to, you know, I, I don't know if this, are they allowing, is it going to be at Fort Myers or are you going up to Boston? 
I don't know yet. I haven't heard any um, anything new with that. Um, so we're just kind of staying by the phones, really. <laughs> either way, either way. If yeah. you're going to Fort Myers for spring training 2.0 or you're going to Fenway for spring training 2.0, we're going to be watching out for you. Make sure that you stay healthy. Strike out everybody and their mother when they come up to, 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 to bat against you. We wish you nothing but the best. And that's going to conclude episode 58. Marcus Mack, myself, we'll check you out. Episode 59, Mike, we appreciate the time. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Mike. Oh, sugar honey iced tea. It's the EAC show. Mm -hmm.